Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and unique spaces. Today we're traveling to Whidbey Island in Washington to tour one couple's dreamy treehouse, which they built as a unique vacation rental. Besides being a magical cabin that feels like it's floating 30 feet up in the air, the other impressive thing about this treehouse is that it's actually legal. And if you're a follower of this channel, you probably already know that one of the hardest things to do when you have an idea to build something wacky or alternative is to obtain a permit. But before we take a tour and meet the couple behind this treehouse, please make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Max. I'm Tatiana, and this is Treehouse Weedby. We've been living in the Northwest for a while, and we love being in the outdoors. And so we wanted a place to escape that we were out in nature. And when we were trying to stay in a treehouse, they were all sold out. And so we looked at each other and we said, why don't we build one? And that's how it all started. Whidbey Island is the largest island on Puget Sound. It's about an hour from Seattle. You can only access the island by ferry from the south end. And it's just one of those places when you get here, you're just secluded and surrounded by nature anywhere you go. Finding the property was a big journey. We knew we wanted to build a remote experience. We found the property in 2018. It took about two years to really get the process going, permitting, finding a builder, and eventually we ended up building it ourselves with some help from Wild Tree Woodworks out of Seattle. Because of the location of the treehouse, we had to haul in everything. So we had to go from the parking area and walk every piece of lumber up here till we got the scaffolding about halfway through the build. We did a whole lot of muscle work. The treehouse was one of my first build projects ever. It was really magical kind of seeing it all go up and having some of my friends around too during the whole build process was really great. The design of the treehouse was very important to us. We wanted to make sure the treehouse was peaceful, it was modern, and it really let the environment speak for itself. Our treehouse is unique because it has a permit and it's completely legal. Getting a permit for the treehouse involved a few steps. We got an architecture design, we got engineering, we got building permits, and so that whole process taught us a lot. It added to the timeline of the build, but we thought that process was well worth it because we wanted to make sure we had a building that was safe and we wanted to add value and, and protection to the land. We live right down the hill from the treehouse, so we get to greet all the guests as they come in, give them a quick tour of the property, and get to see their faces when they look up and see this treehouse. It's been a really cool experience. Let's go through what's holding up this treehouse. So we've got four dug fir trees and one pole in the back on the slope. These are all custom made. The steel part up top uh, that's holding up the beams is made by Ballard Forge. And then we had our engineer, Charles Greenwood, create these struts and a strut bracket here. So there's four of them. They do go through the tree. And contrary to uh, a lot of people's beliefs, it doesn't hurt the tree. The tree does grow around it. And this system allows us to move it out as the tree grows as well. There's a lot of weight on these trees. That's why we distributed it amongst these two on one side. And then we've got the three, three more connections here. Up on this tree, the biggest one, we've got a Nelson HL tab. That's the only static tree tab here. As the house moves, it's sliding back and forth on top of the beam. So except for that one connection there, the treehouse is allowed to move as the tree sways. It was engineered for 110 mile an hour winds and about a 9.1 earthquake. On this tree, we've got our septic line. So uh, me and Tatiana hand dug the septic line through the woods. We didn't want to 
damage any of the tree structure. So we need to keep the integrity of the tree and the roots are really important to that. Now we're inside Treehouse Whitby. So we chose to use birch plywood throughout the treehouse. We wanted a modern look, kind of beautiful wood finishes everywhere. All the lighting is black, all the fixtures are black, the windows are black as well. We really like that contrast with the birch plywood. We wanted people to feel really comfortable and still feel like they're getting an experience in the trees. The base of the treehouse is about 14 feet high at its highest point. The very top of the house is about 31 feet high. We're in all dug fir. These are all about 30 to 50 years old, which we were told is the perfect age for brackets in the treehouse. You're welcomed by the welcome table here. We've got some notes for you, a little knowledge about Whidbey and some instructions, and then a bottle of wine for our guests made by my brother out in Woodville. And then we have got games, Bluetooth speaker, everything you should need for a little relaxation. And then we've got our books, mostly treehouse books. Pete Nelson was a big inspiration for us, so we've got a couple of those down there. Now we're going to move into the living room area. So we've got a fold-out queen-size bed couch here. We can fit four people in the treehouse. We prefer to only have two, makes it a little more intimate and a little more room to move around. We do provide extra linens just in case, you know, we get someone that's not a couple and doesn't want to share a bed. All the fixtures in here were picked out by my partner Tatiana. This one is a local piece. We wanted to add a little more wood feeling here. So we built a custom ship's ladder made from Pete Nelson's design to get us up to the loft and the bedroom. So this is the bedroom or the loft. We've got a queen size bed here and uh, more black fixtures, black windows. And we wanted to create a 360 view. We've got the water view on this side. And then sometimes you get sunset in the winter once the uh, leaves kind of fall off. And then we wanted some opening windows as well to create good airflow in here. We've got these cool little side tables too. We really like these. We think it adds a little more color to the place because we do have a lot of black and wood. And then we've got this tree uh, right outside our big window here. It reminds you that you're in the tree and when the wind is blowing too, you're watching it move. You can feel the movement of the tree house and see the trees moving as well. I thought it was a really cool uh, addition to the loft area. And then obviously we've got the deck and normally water views. It's October, so we're getting into Halloween season, so we're gonna get a little spook here. This tends to roll in in the morning and burn off uh, once the sun comes out. We want people to be able to have their coffee undercover or wine at night. And then we've also created a little seating area over here. We had a friend create this art piece for us based off the design. So he hadn't even seen the treehouse in person yet. We really love it. His name is Kosafea and he kind of captured exactly what the treehouse looks like to us. We've got the fire pit. We've got Charlie, our dog, our French bulldog in there, and then some hammocks. And we kind of uh, went through the different color iterations, but we like the, the black and white. We think it's a real cool statement piece about the tree that really kind of brings you in the treehouse and most people don't notice it is the treehouse so they really start looking at it but we really like it. So over here we have our kitchen. It's pretty compact. We don't have a ton of space but we think we've got everything you could need to make a nice meal in here. So we've got our little mini fridge, fridge freezer and then we've got drying rack and cutting boards some towels and then uh, we've got bowls and stuff up here and then over to our little coffee station we keep it simple pour over or french press and then we've got our stainless sink olive oil salt and pepper and then you've got your trash water heater uh, internet's down there, water filters down there, all the stuff we could kind of jam into a small space. And then over here we have a little cooktop, your knives, 
and then the toaster slash air fryer here and then uh, we have all the stuff you'd need to make breakfast lunch dinner so we use rich light uh, it's from tacoma washington we thought it would be a really cool idea for a countertop and backsplash and it's made from resin and paper and it does a great job and it's eco-friendly and on the other side of the kitchen we've got our storage um, we find space where we can so we've got all the coffee creamer sugars tea you've got a fire extinguisher and a first aid kit in there as well and then down here we've got all your dishes plates utensils everything you should need so we wrapped these three walls around a tree that is also holding up the structure. Our goal was to not really cut down any trees up here at all. So we designed the whole tree house to wrap around all the trees. There is a lot of room for growth. In a big storm, since the top is around 30 feet, you will get the trees hitting the top of the house. We did kind of put in some iron to take the brunt of that but the house is designed to move with the trees as well. So we do get a little extra leeway when it's really blowing. So the last area of the tree house uh, is our little bathroom back here. Originally, we didn't plan on having a bathroom in here. We had water up here already, so we figured out a way to get septic as well. And there's a tiny little sink and there is another bathroom in the main house. It's got a big shower as well. So let me take you to the second bathroom. If you go to the right along the ridge, you'll hit our gate, which will take you down to the water in about 10 minutes. And then we've got our bathroom this way. We wanted to add an optional bathroom that has a shower in it for the guests. There's a lot of hiking on Whidbey, so we thought it would be super important to be able to clean yourself up. So we added a bathroom into our house for guests. It's a huge bathroom. It's bigger than our bathroom in the house, uh, which may have been a design mistake, but guests really love it. Uh, we've got a double vanity here, custom cabinets, and then a big walk-in shower with subway tile. We created this space specifically to be set apart from our house. And the whole room is locked off from ours, so uh, you won't be able to access our house. This is all just for the guests, and we allow people to leave their stuff in here and, and give complete privacy when they're staying with us. It's great to get feedback from the guests just around the intention behind the build. What we're hearing a lot is every piece of detail was so intentional. From the stairs up to the treehouse to all the wood that we chose inside and outside. Staying in a treehouse for the first time was an experience that I had never had before. We were amazed by just how you could be so at peace and be so up high and feeling like you're just on top of the world. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique space tour.